at uh, this point in time. All right, Gautam Shah is a market master of the day, founder and chief strategist at Goldilocks Premium Research. Uh, Gautam, good to have you with us here. Thank you for your time. Uh, I mean, I think uh, the story is the same, right? Uh, uh, buying the dips has worked and it continues to work. Uh, but uh, just a, a quick snapshot view. Where are we at? Uh, we had a view earlier from, uh, from, from Lawrence Belanco, uh, who was kind of saying that maybe it's getting a little more murkier now. Uh, we are kind of flagging momentum. Uh, but I don't know if you agree with that or, or do you think uh, this is a go-go market still? Go on. Good morning, Prashant. Well, I think it's dangerous to believe that every single dip in a bull market will get bought into because at some point of time it will reverse and when it reverses, it doesn't announce and come. Having said that, if you really look at the uh, setup over the last few weeks, what you'll realize is that the market is looking a little exhausted. I think the up days are not as strong in terms of momentum and participation. In fact, the down days last week uh, has been a lot more uh, stronger. And that makes me believe that there is a battle between domestic liquidity and valuations and global headwinds. Until this battle continues, I don't think the market is going up significantly or going down significantly. So I think the numbers are very clear from a short term perspective, 25, 150, I think, uh, uh, is an important barrier which we hit yesterday uh, at the highs and 25500 600 according to me is a sort of a ceiling for now and i'm not looking at any number beyond the same for the time being on the downside i think the 24800 area is an important support if that were to break at any point of time you could possibly see a five percent dip on the nifty and as i've said multiple times in the past five percent is the new ten uh, percent so given that it looks like as if the indices are just going to broadly stay in a range oscillate between greed and fear, not go up much, not go down much. And this is still a very sector specific and stock specific market because money has to flow in into some pockets. And I think we are seeing IT, pharma, FMCG, chemicals doing extremely well. So those are the pockets to focus on. And basically the idea is to stay away from the recent outperformers. Mm. Uh, got the morning, Rima here. So in IT, pharma, FMCG, which are likely to you know see money flow in and stocks do well, which stocks do you like? Well, I think the entire basket has done very well. I mean, look at the move in Infosys, uh, TCS, HCL Tech, Tech Mahindra. And mind you, uh, IT has come out of a range after almost two years. I think the high was tested in 2021, and that number was was removed uh, a month back. So I do see a lot more strength, possibly 12 to 15% upside on the IT index. And I think that's the issue because... For the Nifty itself, the leadership is somehow gone because apart from IT, banks are not doing too well. Reliance has lost uh, its way quite a bit. So just IT index cannot keep propelling the Nifty higher. But as an opportunity, I do see, uh, see uh, many of these top line stocks do exceedingly well even from here. Add to it pharma. I think what a beautiful structural trend uh, uh, that sector has seen, and I, and I don't see any signs of uh, uh, topping out there as well. So I think both these both these sectors, which are historically known to be defensives, will continue to do well. And the good thing is they can do well in the good times for the index and the bad times for the index. Mm. Hi, Gautam. Uh, good morning and good to see you. When in fact, pharma has been the big outperformer of this year. You know, the index is up, I think, more than 35%. So big move is what we're seeing under-owned, uh, you know, battered out, and some of the stocks have come back. But Gautam, let's, before we get back to equities, I want to read your view on a couple of commodities. On crude, you know, that's uh, Brent crude is below $70 per barrel this morning. Where do you see that number headed? And also gold, which has been twinkling of late, holding at around $25 an ounce, $2,500 an ounce. Uh, view on both these two? Yeah, I think it's a good point. I think that's the problem, really, because there are some global headwinds, and that's been validated by what has happened on NYMEX crude in the last uh, a few weeks. Mind you, for almost 12 months, NYMEX crude was in this band of about 70 on the downside and 95 on the upside. Breaking 70 only means that there is a problem. You know, there could be a problem economic-wise. And I think uh, with the follow-up that you've seen in the last five days, it does look as if NYMEX crude is going significantly lower from here, maybe another 10, 12, 15% downside, which I think will be a little problematic. On the other hand, if you look at gold and silver, they, mean, they remain absolutely steady on the charts. In fact, I do believe that gold will go on to do very, very big things over the next six to 12 months. And that's been our stand for the last 18 months. So I think that's clearly an opportunity. But 
to add to that i think the us markets for the first time in a year are looking a little wobbly on the charts i mean the nasdaq is losing losing its uh, leadership with what's happened with nvidia uh, with all talks around what warren buffett has done to apple and his cash positions and in the price action itself has not been all that encouraging so when you have a slightly negative us market action it puts pressure on indian markets which are anyway trading on very high valuations and because of the domestic liquidity and these global factors that i just highlighted i think the market will broadly be in the range and that's the best thing for us to happen right now on gold uh, you said it's uh, poised to do big things you want to put some levels to it uh, gautam yeah sure i think our short term working number on gold has been about 26 2650 down that's not far away but we've been riding it right from 1900 levels and but if you have to talk medium term long term i think over the next 12 to 18 months you will see a 3350 dollars uh, on gold which is a nice 25% rally from where we are and i do see a similar 25 to 30% upside on silver coming in so at levels of 28 28 half i think the downside is very limited and the upside is large so it's, it's you know these are structural charts and they have followed up beautifully they've handled the bad times beautifully so i think that's where capital should be committed to a larger extent mm. and uh, you sorry And you said crude prices can fall 10 to 15 percent. So on Brent, we are looking at 60 dollars per barrel. Yes, and lower, and lower, and lower. Yeah. And what does that mean then for, say, paint companies or any of these uh, oil marketing companies or ONGC Oil India? Conversely, on the way down. Well, I think you have to take a stock-specific call there. Uh, uh, but I think the two key points. One is. crude going and sustaining below 70 on nymex means that there is a problem globally because otherwise you would not have seen this mega breakdown that has happened in the last 10 days so that's point number 1 point number 2 many of the outperformers of the past you know the auto sector the capital goods psu real estate they've all lost their leadership if you look at the last two and a half months they've all been sideways and as the nifty hit levels of 25000 and beyond these sectors haven't participated so clearly smart money has gradually moved out of these spaces and moved into other spaces mm. you know uh, just to uh, i want to just some uh, go back to what you began by saying so I, i'm paraphrasing here and correct me if i'm wrong what you're saying is this is still a bull market but near term risk reward is a bit uncertain so be uh, be a little careful let's uh, am i am i am i paraphrasing you correctly Yeah, absolutely. I think uh, medium term, long term, we remain absolutely bullish. I think there are no signs of topping out on the charts. It's just that we've come to a point where the short term studies are not in sync with the price action anymore. I think the market needs a five to seven percent kind of a cool off. Whenever it happens, it might not happen maybe in the next two weeks. But I think the the last quarter of the calendar year, October to December, is when one will have to be a little conservative. Mind you, in 2021 and 22, we had a similar scenario where, where for about six to eight months. small caps went into a 12 13% correction and then they came came back strongly so it's just that be careful what you're buying at these prices i mean stay away from anything that is narrative based that is story based and that is richly valued those are the pockets you want to stay away from there is still a lot of pockets which offer value and i think one could commit into that i think nbfcs is one space that we've been liking chemicals is one space that we've been liking metals also to a certain extent i think one can commit capital into them right no i i i get that so uh, just a quick word in, in psus right are we starting to see momentum there flagging uh, taking a decisive back seat gautam momentum has been taking a back seat for a couple of months now i mean uh, you don't see psu stocks move with the nifty and that's very clear when we uh, see the ratio charts that the outperformance is absolutely gone it's just that the indices are steady and therefore psu stocks are not correcting much but if the indices were to get into a bit of a correction then i think psu stocks will come under pressure again long term all is well because they are still not in fraught territory you know or exuberant territory in some sense but near term i think they require another 5 7% maybe even a 10% dip before things get back on track gautam you said you like select metal stocks uh, or metal names what do you like out there because you know, this china chinese data is worrying me a lot particularly the export data yesterday there was this headline that chinese exports beat estimates most worrying aspect for me that means they're not consuming enough but you know normally when things uh, go so bad it normally hits a trough so what do you like from there 
Yeah, that's true. I think even when I speak to a lot of top managements in the metal space, the, the message is that on the ground, things are not all that good. But the stock markets are a discounting mechanism, and I think they have discounted a lot in the, into the future. So I think a lot of the current negatives are already in the price. And if you look at the metals index itself, I think 8,500 on the downside and 9,700 on the upside is clearly the band. Whenever that breakout past 96, 9,700 comes, I think it will be an opportunity. And mind you, metals in, as an index has doubled over the last 12 months. So it needed that consolidation. It's happened in the last three months. And I think many of these top stocks, JSW Steel, JSPL, Nalco, Sale, Vedanta, Hindalco, I think they all look very good opportunities from a six to 12 month perspective. Hmm. Uh, no, I, I get that. So uh, Gautam, uh, would you want to name uh, three, four sort of ideas you can leave with the viewers on a positional basis? Well, I think, as I said, among the top sectors, if you look at uh, 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 IT, I think uh, TCS, HCL Tech, Tech Mahindra have been right on top of our list. Uh, in the FMCG space, I think ITC and uh, HUL have been on top of our list for a while now. In the NBFC space, I think uh, Bajaj FinServ and Bajaj Finance, I think, offer great value from a charts perspective and from a valuation perspective. And I see a lot of comfort in terms of margin of safety. And in the pharma space, I think stocks like Dr. Reddy, Sipla, Sun Pharma still offer great value. So honestly, I'm just sticking to top quality right now. I think I, I don't want to go even into grade B and grade C, given the fact that we seem to be at very elevated levels. Okay, well, it's a large cap list, right? Uh, thank you very much, Gautam, and uh, thank you for joining us. Clear views and uh, a bit of caution on board as well, at least in the near term, as far as markets are uh, concerned. So that's Gautam Shah, Goldilocks, with uh, uh, his thoughts. 30 points lower on the Nifty now. We are at about 20.